evening, everybody, and welcome to the Rocky Mountain Honda Dealers Drive for the Championship, live from New Jersey. I'm Lionel Bienvenu. This is Aaron Anderson. And that, ladies and gentlemen, MetLife Stadium, site oh. of the Super Bowl 48. Broncos, by the way, it's snowing dark right, right now. now. Yeah, the snow is coming down. The stadium's dark, so uh, <laughs> nothing going on at this point. Broncos, Seahawks, <laughs> Sunday is the yes, day they get it on. Exactly. And Sunday's game day, and that is the Players' Day. But today, Aaron, was the best day of Super Bowl week because yeah. it was our day. Our day. Yes, we're talking media day. Uh, John Fox actually gave the Broncos players off. Uh, they did not practice today. That's their usual routine during the regular season. So yeah. he wants to keep things going there. Don't want to change anything even during Super Bowl week. And, and so far, so good. We're witnessing one of the greatest seasons in the history of sports. Exactly. History of sports. Not just football. Yeah. You're right. History of sports has come back by Peyton Manning. Now, of course, I talked to John Elway today, and he was asked the same thing. What about Peyton's legacy? Does he need to win this Super Bowl to cement that legacy as the greatest of all time? And here was John's answer. When people say that, they're, they're looking for something. Uh, because he had such a tremendous year, I mean, what else are you going to talk about about Peyton Manning that's negative other than, okay, we got to go to his legacy. All right, Aaron, there's no hiding this anymore. I'm sure people may have seen this on Twitter, Facebook, whatever, national it was, television. It was everywhere. We uh, wore the Broncos orange and blue jackets today at Media Day, all right? Uh, we did it to keep the good luck and the winning tradition going, not to call yeah. attention to ourselves no. and say, hey, look at me, no. look at my jacket. No, no, that, that would, wasn't the reason. Yeah. We've all seen the goofballs on Media Day dressed up like goofballs, right? But we did it. <laughs> As I said, to keep tradition going here. Well, look, we didn't want to cheapen it. This, uh, ladies and gentlemen, was for the good of the Broncos. They haven't lost since we busted these things out, and that was about a month ago yeah. on United in Orange Friday. The fact is we had no idea this was going to be such a hit. And when we took the floor at the Prudential Center in Newark, it set off a firestorm of attention. We were interviewed by NBC, actually. NBC Sports sent out a tweet with a picture of us, me and you, saying, quote, favorites for most colorful media members today. Yeah, they were. Uh, we were also interviewed by ABC, Canadian TV, Norwegian TV, The New York Times, Sports Illustrated, but that wasn't the best. Regis Philbin was there. <laughs> Regis saw the jackets, almost lost his mind. Here he is, and other reactions to the jackets today. We're looking for our crew, and I get you. Well, I want to talk to you. I'm disappointed. I mean, What's you're always you... dressed impeccably. Where's the ABC. color? So who is this guy with this jacket? ABC. Do you think this is a circus? Well, do you want to borrow this? This is a media thing. What's wrong with you? Good to see you, Regis. I see you, man. Looking spiffy. Where'd you get that at? I uh, got it back in Denver for Orange Friday. What do you think? Showing that Denver Bronco love. I love it. <laughs> Any crazy questions so far? No, but that suit is fantastic, my brother. I like that. I, I appreciate that. You know, my, my key here is I don't want to stand out in media. I want to be just part of the crowd. Yeah, I, I feel you. You're not going to stand out with that, man. Where'd you get that suit from? That's a crazy Dude, do you, want, do you want to trade jackets? I'll take the 87. You take this? I don't get the $100,000. Fine, I'll wear that, yeah. <laughs> well, I wore it on the John Fox show a couple weeks, and Foxy liked it, so I, I, I got to have it. Twitter. Uh, Where'd you get that? Kodak, first off. I know a great tailor. We're going to hook you up. Yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. We can make that work. This would go really well with a Super Bowl ring, wouldn't it? It would be awesome, man. I would wear one. I'm not, no lie. What do you think? About what? The, the game? About the game. Or you want to talk about my fashion? What do you think of the jacket, buddy? I love it. They got that in a, a 50 large. <laughs> 50 large I wonder for if they make it. We could make that happen. Yeah. You know, there were a, a lot of celebrities, a lot of former Broncos running around. Stink. Mark Schlereth was one of the first to greet us, and he greeted us warmly. He liked, he liked these jackets. Stink, he sure did. <laughs> and I caught up with Terrell Davis today, the former Broncos running back, two-time Super Bowl winner, rushed for over 2,000 yards in a season. He's the guy, John Elway says, made those Super Bowl titles possible. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, TD's first comment, though, was uh, about the jacket. You know, you wear well. Looks good on you. All right, well, so you don't want to take it on NFL Network? No, no, no. I'll, I'll let you wear that. That's, that looks perfect on you. you can have it. I'll wear this. This blue right here looks good on me. You look great, man. You look great. Well, and also, look, man, you got to be excited. I mean, 15 oh, yeah. years since the Broncos made it to the Super Bowl. They're back this year. It's been a long time. You guys had John Elway at quarterback. Yeah. You had a Hall of Fame running a back. A decent right? running back. A decent running back. They kind of, a guy that just worked. Yeah, yeah. just worked. You know? And they kind of got the perfect story of Peyton Manning's a quarterback, and, and there's a Georgia, former Georgia running you know back there's, there's, carrying the ball now. There's some now. crazy similarities, and I pointed this out to somebody the other day. I 
Okay. <laughs> TD is a great guy. Yeah. Uh, said he loves to come to these Super Bowls and big NFL events because he gets to hang out and reconnect with guys like John Elway yeah. and Stink and other uh, players, former Broncos that are there. Um, look, he told me this. If the weather holds up mm -hmm. uh, and Peyton Manning is clicking that he thinks the Broncos are going to win this game. I think that's pretty much the general sentiment out yeah, there for well, sure. Let's hope the weather holds. Welcome back to the John Fox Show presented by your Rocky Mountain Honda dealers. Again, we are live here in Super Bowl Boulevard, formerly known as Times Square. All right, Peyton Manning will be named the MVP. I don't think there's any doubt about that right here on Saturday night. Then Sunday, he'll try to become the first quarterback to win a Super Bowl for two different teams, all right? Here's what Peyton said today about uh, those Broncos who want to try to win this thing for him. If somebody wants to win a game for you, boy, that's, uh, that's extremely flattering. We are with our seven sports Super Bowl analyst, Brandon Stokely. Uh, Brandon, you have caught passes from Eli Manning and Peyton Manning, right? That's right. You played for the Broncos and the Giants. What's the main difference between the brothers? I would say it's a personality. Eli's a lot more laid back. Peyton is, you know, intense pretty much all the time. He, he'll joke and have a little fun, but for the most part, he right. is an intense guy, especially right. when it comes to football. And I bet Peyton likes to play jokes on Eli. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure he does. Eli's probably got a few uh, stories yeah. to tell about that. All right, well, Peyton and Eli had dinner this week. Uh, Peyton met Eli's little daughter, his, Peyton's niece, for the first time at dinner. He said that was very nice. Um, and Eli had a great comment about Peyton, talking about the neck surgery and how Peyton couldn't throw a ball 10 yards. Here's Eli. After that first surgery, this next surgery. Now look, you and I have a lot of connections. My first TV job was in Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, your dad was head coach at USL, so I covered your dad That's back right. then. Uh, so we're Louisiana kids right here. Um, I'm from New Orleans, worked in TV there. I did stories with the Manning family, with Archie. I did a story with Cooper before he went to Ole Miss. I did a story with Peyton. I did a story with 10-year-old Eli when he was playing flag football. And you're not the only guy who caught passes in Peyton Manning, okay? Take a look at this video. You might have seen it before. I've shown this quite a bit, but I had to break it out during Super Bowl week. Uh, me and Peyton Manning playing catch on the field at Newman High School. We went to high school back in New Orleans, and Peyton was such a mature kid uh, even back in high school. And I say very mature, Brandon, in handling his business and the media and football, his fame and his fortune. But there's an immature side to him as well because uh, he's a legendary prankster and jokester, right? And what's the funniest thing you've seen Peyton pull in the locker room? Well, I, I wouldn't say locker room, but I'll say out on the golf course. You know, just be careful if he offers you some sunscreen because sometimes it turns out it's icy hot and it doesn't <laughs> feel good going on. Let me tell you, it's not that's not the best round oh. of golf that you will spend four hours that with your face burning you know that's not right. a very nice thing to do that is a good one so icy hot in, in place of sunscreen yeah, yeah. Peyton, man, if, you like guy, right. if you don't like the guy if you don't like the guy that's great stuff all right brandon we'll be back in a minute but let's get to some news of the day now from the super bowl now let's throw it over live to marshall zelliger who's at uh, metlife stadium in new jersey marshall lionel i could use some of that peyton sunscreen right now at least the hot side of things the only thing louder than times square itself might be Lionel's jacket. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Hey, Marshall, thank you so much for the news of the day there. All right, when we come back after this break, uh, we'll have a very special Fan of the Week segment, and we'll see what it's like to be at home with Brandon Stokely. That's coming up next on The John Fox Show. Welcome back to The John Fox Show, presented by your Rocky Mountain Honda dealers. In case you have not noticed, we're live in New York City. These are Broncos fans going crazy back here. They're ready for game day right now. But let's get it done here. Let's see what a week it's been like for Coach John Fox. Let's go three and out with the head coach, brought to you by Pandora. I think the most exciting time is yet to come. All right, well, John, it was great doing the show with you this year. Enjoyed it. Uh, good no. luck on Sunday, Super Bowl 48, man. All right, appreciate that very much, Lionel, and appreciate all your support through the season. All right, John Fox, the Broncos went through the final practice today, and afterward, Coach Fox, there's only one thing left to do, and that's go get it, yep. get the game. All right, Anderson's back, survived running through the uh, the crowd <laughs> the here masses. on Super Bowl Boulevard. Brandon Stokely is with us. Brandon, you played in two Super Bowls, 1-1 one, one with Peyton, 1-1 uh, one, one in Baltimore. So you've been on the Friday night before the Super Bowl twice. Right now, what are the players doing at this time? 
Try to keep the same routine that you've kept all year long. You don't want to start overanalyzing everything. You put the work in, you prepared, you've right. done it all. Now just try to relax. Don't start overanalyzing it. That's the worst thing that can happen to you. What did you do though? Were you in your hotel room sitting there? Were you at dinner? Was the family around you? Were you by yourself? No, you yeah, no, by yourself. You yeah. know, I, I didn't want any distractions. That's, right. that's your time. Welcome to the Rocky Mountain Honda Dealers Drive for the championship. Wow. Broncos and Seahawks, a little more than 18 hours away. Can't wait. MetLife Stadium right behind us will become the center of the universe <laughs> tomorrow. I'm Lionel Bienvenue. And I'm Aaron Anderson. Super Sunday. It's here on the East Coast. The game kickoff closing fast. Saturday night was pro football's version of the Oscars. The 2013 AP Most Valuable Player is Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning got 49 out of 50 votes for the MVP award. Former Bears quarterback Jim Miller of Sirius XM Radio Who? voted for Tom Brady. Mm. You can't be serious. Wow, Jim Miller. You need some evaluation. <laughs> Whatever. With Peyton holed up in the team's secret <laughs> Super Bowl hotel, Archie Manning and Peyton's young son Marshall went up and accepted the award. Peyton won three awards tonight. FedEx Player of the Year, Offensive Player of the Year, and the MVP. And Peyton accepted through a videotaped message. I am humbled by this recognition. Brandon Stokely, former Broncos receiver, two-time Super Bowl champion, one of Peyton Manning's inner circle, <laughs> is with us as our Super Bowl analyst. Brandon, welcome to the show. Thanks for How having me. How you doing, me. man? Great. Listen, MVP award, was there any question Peyton should have been the unanimous choice? No, no question at all. 50 out of 50, right? Should be, yeah. Should I mean, have been. 49 right. out of 50. Unbelievable. How, how about Jim Miller? You were going to say who? This guy's uh, rationale was that I looked at who had the most value for his team. I thought Tom Brady carried his team the same way that AP carried Minnesota last year. Your thoughts? Uh, I mean, the guy's an idiot. Uh, obviously. <laughs> Don't sugarcoat it, man. Tell us how you have it. He wants attention. That's the only possible explanation for him doing that. Broncos and Seahawks in that building right behind us. Yeah, now the Broncos were in that building earlier today for a walkthrough. Uh, they went over there, Peyton Manning and John Elway, all of them. Uh, there's the two icons standing there on the field right there. Was this important, Brandon, to get over to the stadium, even though you don't really practice, just to, to get a walkthrough in? Absolutely. You know, you want to get the feeling of the grass, uh, what the lighting, um, you know, just Every little detail that you can get um, helps you. And so it's always good to get out there early right. and the day before the game and, and get comfortable. Well, let's hear from Peyton Manning right now. He, he says the awards are fine, but you know what? He's all about winning. And as we said, his teammates. Yeah. It's a team accomplishment just to be in this game. And if we were to win, it would be a team accomplishment as well. All right, now to the Broncos coach, Sean Fox, guys. I sat down with Foxy one-on-one -on -one this week to try to find out, you know, was he having fun? Was he enjoying this week? And right. he kind of said, yeah, but you could tell he was all about winning the football game. You know, it's all good. You know, to get here, you know, I ran into a couple of Seahawk people in their front office. And, you know, it's a, it's a great honor and a privilege to be here. But other than that, yeah, it's kind of business as usual. I love it. Business as usual. <laughs> right. And I'm here for work. Yeah. That's John Fox in a nutshell. All business. And it's a tremendous uh, opportunity, and, and it creates this extraordinary challenge to see if you can be the one. To see if you can be the one. Now, Brandon yeah. Stoker, you were the one. Twice, right? You got your hands on that Lombardi Trophy in Baltimore and in Indy, and you raised it up. What did that feel like, man? There's nothing Gosh. like it. All the hard work that you put in for all the years of playing football, right. it finally paid off. You're finally world champion. I think that experience that we've had with, with the thing, the ups and downs that we've had, um, that this team will handle this week well. All right, we'll talk more football with Brandon and Owen in just a minute. But Andrew Hill is back now with the story of a local kid makes good and really, maybe really win a good. title. Yeah. yeah, very exciting. I spent time today with Mitch and Ryan's family. You guys went to Hoboken to see the cake boss? Well, we did. Look, yes, this we did. may have been the most fun we had away from football. <laughs> a slice football of heaven. Talk? We found it in Hoboken, a guy who's having his cake and, and eating it, too. Look, yeah, the cake boss is the star of a reality TV show on TLC, Buddy V. Mm, Buddy. Star, and guess what? He's on our side. Hey, you come to New Jersey, Hoboken, you got to stop at Carlo's Bake Shop, oh. the home of Cake Boss. Buddy! International superstar on reality TV. Right, the Cake Boss. Ah! The cake's going down. <laughs> What's up? 
And this year is gonna be the biggest yet. <laughs> but he's gotta be baking something up for the Broncos and Seahawks, right? Yeah. Let's see what he's got cooking. Come on. Hey guys, how we doing? What's up, man? How you doing? It's great to see you, man. How are you? Good to see you too. All the way from Denver, we love it. From Denver, we're chasing our Broncos to the Super Bowl. I know, I know. And we said, we said, look, we're in Hoboken, right in Jersey. We had to stop by and see what you had cooking. Well, come on in. Come see what we got. Come on in. Super Bowl being in New York is like great. I mean, it's great for business, it's great for visibility, it's great to, you know, just have so many parties and so many right. great events going on. And you know what? At events, they need cakes. So <laughs> I'm in the cake business, and it works out good for everybody, That's man. Good. It's gonna be a really intense Super Bowl. It's not like some years it's like a blowout, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's gonna come down tooth and nail, man. You got two great teams. You know, I'm a little bitter. My Giants ain't in the Super Bowl this year. Well, look, you've got a Manning in the Super Bowl, though. Oh, right? that's uh, right. I know you I, know Eli, so uh, listen, who are you gonna be for here? I am going for Denver. I'm nice. going for the Broncos. Uh, I want to see Peyton win it, you know. Um, He's just, how can you not like Peyton Manning? I mean, exactly. he's just an amazing player, an amazing guy. Do you have any special cake for the Broncos? Maybe I should. Maybe maybe I should call Eli and tell him we'll make something on a sneak. So if Peyton wins, we'll present him with a cake. That'd, that'd be cool. Come on, let me show you. Wow, you got Lombardi trophies already made up. That's it, man. Peyton Manning. Wilson versus Manning, baby. You know it. This is awesome, man. I mean, even, even so lifelike. Just Peyton Manning, Jersey, edible. Do we eat 100%. That That's fondant, baby. Can I take a bite? You can't. Really <laughs> <crazy. laughs> well, thank you guys for coming by. Buddy, thanks appreciate so much, awesome, man. We appreciate man. Thanks it. for the hospitality. Anytime, brother. Go, Broncos. Go, Broncos. Go Denver, baby. Woo! Play-Doh. Oh, right, buddy. How cool is Buddy? I mean, he's, he's going for Denver, baby. Right. He has something big going down tomorrow, potentially. Right. Wait, I may have said a little bit too much. Well, he wants us to keep it, keep it on low. the sneak, on man. The wraps, yeah. Don't give it away, but I there might be something big for the winner of the Super Bowl. Potentially. Yeah, we're just saying. All right. All right, we'll be back with more from MetLife Stadium with Brandon Stokely in just a few minutes. All right, right now, let's head back to the studio with Phil Aldrich. Who Look, we are here. It is Saturday night before the game, right, Brandon? Um, we, we talked about it last night, but you played with Peyton. Um, you're one of his best friends. What is he doing tonight in the hotel room? I think he's doing what he's done all year long for his whole career. He's just going over the game plan, and rehearsing it one more time, and uh, and I think he'll be fine. But I, I, he's not doing anything that he hadn't done all year long. Does tonight. he have supreme confidence? I mean, we listening to him this week. Aaron and I said, like, really he's loose. walking up and down the halls. He's loose. He's yeah. funny. He doesn't seem like he's under pressure. He's not tight. Do you think he's confident he's going to win this game tomorrow? Very confident. That's the way he always plays. He's always confident. I'm going with uh, 31 to 17 as well. Wow. You copied I, my score. I'm not copying. You, I can you come really, up with your own? I said that before you even got here. Original. Wow. Last week I said wow. 31 to 17. <laughs> we have a tape. Where's the Zabruder tape? I think if the Broncos get a lead, like Aaron just mentioned, yep. if Peyton can score on the first drive, drive him down, yep. that'll kind of set the tone. Right. If the Seahawks get a lead, it might be a little bit tougher. Yeah. I agree. I agree. We, we've already made our predictions. We all yeah. say the Broncos are going to win, mm -hmm. but we do need that one special ingredient to put it over the top. Yeah. Brandon, I don't know if you followed the story, but we busted these out. <laughs> yeah. United in Orange, we busted out these jackets. I've worn it on the John Fox show. Orange worn it on the, on the Seven Sports Extra show. Yes. And they haven't lost since, so we are busting these things out again today yeah. and we'll bring him in the stadium and keep the good luck going but you do not have a jacket let's at all could, could well, we put it on him oh, just, yeah, just, yeah, just, just like jim what Manson. An i know what an butler honor. well let's put butler both of them on let's put them both on this we go. Two. look at that brandon yeah. stokely with the jackets we can't lose now beautiful There's all right no we cannot lose this guaranteed game. guaranteed <laughs> win guaranteed win all right we'll be back with more super bowl 48 pregame coverage live from new jersey right after this